yesterday, you made a beautiful risotto for your loved one, some Italian music in the background, some red wine maybe, you got lucky, couple rounds perhaps, and the next day you're like, shit, I'm still horny. I don't want to break the bang though. What to do? Arancini. Let's choose that leftover rice, baby, let's go. There's hundreds of things you can put in your risotto, but today, I make my favorite one of all time, tomato and mozzarella arancini. For the risotto, here is what you'll need. Finely chopped shallots, finely chopped garlic, cold butter, grated Parmesan cheese, very good olive oil, obviously this one, fresh basil, tomato passata or straight tomatoes, the best rice you can find. I'm using Carnaroli, but you can also use some Arborio. A dry white wine and a warm vegetable broth. First step, we're gonna sweat some shallots and garlic in some olive oil. The goal here is to sweat everything nice and slow until we can extract all the flavor. And the key here is to have zero coloration. Now we can also add some salt and pepper. See, everything is translucent, it smells good, zero coloration. It's gonna be the time to add our rice. Now obviously, you can measure your rice like most people, but here's a little trick. I think I've showed you guys in another video. What I like to do is use my hand as a gauge. So now I guess we're gonna make uh, four portions for what we need. So this is one portion, one portion, in two, three, and four. Oh, well, you know what? Let's go. The part where we toast the rice is very important. That's gonna do multiple things. First, it's gonna start the starch releasing process and also it's gonna coat every single grain of rice individually with oil to make sure the rice is separate when it cooks and it doesn't stick together. So very important, always toast your rice. You can also do this in a dry pan or in fat, which today is olive oil. The rice has been toasting for four minutes now. It's good to go. I just want to show you guys what the rice looks like at this point. As you can see, it's translucent. You can see like the white part in the middle. It's now time to deglaze with the white wine. Pro tip. Now, I know not everyone can uh, you know, afford to use the best wine when they're cooking, but if you can, always use a wine you would drink, you know? Uh, never use those shitty grocery wine that are salty. Basically, the goal is to like use a bit for risotto, and then when it's time to eat it, keep a glass for yourself. People are also always thinking like, I need to like stir my risotto like all the time. I can't stop, it's gonna stick. It's not true, you know? Just kind of like, listen to what this, what's going on, you know? The sound's your best friend. If, if you hear this bubbling, you're usually pretty good. If you don't hear any sound, you're probably fucked, you know? So, so usually at this step, you can already know if you're after a good start or not just by seeing how starchy and creamy your rice is. And see here, it's already super starchy, meaning we did the toasting process right, so we're after a good start. We can start adding our broth. Now the reason why I'm adding the broth little by little is because you want to kind of stress your rice. Imagine there's a grain of rice, okay? I'm in there, we're having a big rice party, it's like Michael Rubin's rice party all white, everyone's invited, and then there's no more booze. In this case, there's no more broth. Everyone's freaking out, people are even fighting. Guess what? Some delicious broth comes in, and now everyone's like, ah, oh, relieved. That starch is coming out of the rice. And then, we're still dry, what's going on? Some beautiful broth. And then, everyone's relaxed. More starch, more creaminess. And then you do that over and over and over, and a magical thing will happen. You'll get the creamiest risotto of all time without adding any cream. And that's the beauty of it. So at this point, we already used half of our broth, meaning it's time for our passata. And also keep some stuff. You might need some at the end to stretch it. So I'm probably gonna use one and two. See, earlier I was telling you guys about getting lucky tonight. Here's a little teaser, the sound you're gonna hear tonight if you make this risotto. Okay, now as you can see, all the broth has been used, the rice is fully cooked, it's now time to add our cold butter, some grated Parmesan cheese, and some basil to infuse. 
Okay, it's been five minutes. Let's check out our risotto here. We can already take the basil out. It's been infusing, its job is done. Last little mix. Oh, it's already cheesy as fuck. Now, let's just make sure the seasoning is good before we move on to the next step. Mmm, it's amazing. Now we can put this thing on a tray to cool down. And now we can just kind of spread that out. Like so. I just draw a few lines like this. That's gonna allow more air to come between our risotto and stop the cooking process. And we're back. Now that the rice has fully cooled down, we can shape our nice little balls. And we can also make sure to put our mozzarella in the middle before we do. Now in a restaurant, we're probably gonna like weight every single ball to make sure they're all the same size, but now we're going full nona style, which means rustic, which means they're probably all gonna be the different size, and it's perfect, you know? Life is full of imperfection, guys. It's now time for the last and final cooling down of our balls before we get to the breading. Okay, it is now time for the breading station, and I know it's been a long time, lots of steps, but trust me, we are almost done and it's all gonna be worth it. Let's do it. Classic breading station, we have flour, eggs, and panko. But you can also use the usual uh, finer breadcrumb for arancini, but you know what? I like the panko. The steps, uh, it's always the same order, always flour, eggs, panko. Pro tip, whenever you're frying something, that has a, a middle of like cheese or like a cream so that can leak, always double bread your arancini. So in this case, you wanna just put it back in the eggs, not the flour. Oh, it's always only once with the flour. In your panko. You can kind of like press down on your breadcrumb to make sure it's fully coated like this. And here you have it, perfectly breaded arancini. And it's finally time to fry our beautiful arancini balls. Uh, here I have a fryer set on 350 Fahrenheit and don't put too much oil in that pot. Keep that halfway because otherwise it's gonna overflow, make a mess, you might burn yourself, disaster, dinner's over, you're not gonna get lucky. So the move here I think is gonna be to fry, let's do four balls at a time. You don't wanna overcrowd your fryer because then it's gonna drop down the temperature and you won't get that nice, crispy, golden and delicious arancini. Check out them balls, dog. Now, the move is, if you put them on a paper towel, that's gonna create some moisture, it's gonna steam from underneath, they're gonna get soggy. No one likes some soggy balls, okay? So the move here is always put them on a cooling rack like this. And what you wanna do right away is hit them with some salt while they're nice and hot. Et voila. Okay, it's time to plate. I like to always stack them up nice and high like a pyramid and also go garnish, I have some fried basil, a little side of sauce. So let's see what happens if I do this here. Now I add, add this basil left that I just fried. So let's put some on top like this. No reminder, you know, remind the basil that was infused in there. Now at this point, you can serve your arancini just as is, but I'm a dipping sauce kind of guy, so I have this leftover pizza sauce from yesterday. So you can just, you know, dip it. And it is finally time for my favorite part of every single video. It's tasting time. I'm hoping here for the craziest cheese pool you've ever seen. Let's check it out. I'm definitely getting lucky tonight. Damn. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the video, please go subscribe, like, leave a comment. You know the drill, all that stuff. And we'll see you on the next episode of Always Hungry. Peace.